It is rare that you can say a person, a CEO, turned around an airplane. If you're out of JFK or anywhere across America, there is Iberia. It is of Spain. And Luis Gallego, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, probably butchering it, but he did it. He did what we wish they would do in America, turn around an airline in conversation with our guy Johnson, IAG CEO, British Airways is his fault. Guy, take, please help us here at your aviation festival with the gentlemen of Iberia. We're here in Lisbon, Tom. Uh, yeah, Luis Gallego is the CEO of IAG. IAG, the holding group for, as you say, Iberia, British Airways, Aer Lingus, the list goes on and on. It's one of the big three holding groups in Europe that owns the vast majority of Europe's airlines. You guys were just talking about what's happening with the dollar. The other thing that's kind of floating around this industry at the moment is what is happening with fuel. Fuel prices absolutely rocketing higher. Uh, you've got Brent obviously surging, but the crack spread on top of that to make jet fuel also super wide at the moment, which means jet fuel is very expensive. Luis, great to see you. Thanks for stopping by to, to see us. Does higher oil, does higher jet fuel mean higher fares? Uh, fuel for us is 25% uh, around of, uh, of uh, total cost, but uh, in IAG we have a hedging policy, so for this year we have uh, above 70% of the fuel uh, cover, and next year is around 40% now. Yep. So at the end, the fares are related to the supply and the demand and the competition that we have in our different markets. Okay, your competition is really important. Mm. The, the American carriers don't hedge. Yes. So you're hedged. Mm. Your American carriers, are, the competitors on the North Atlantic, are not hedged. Do you have an advantage right now because of the higher fuel price on the North Atlantic versus those American competitors? Uh, in North Atlantic, uh, you know, we have a joint business with American Airlines, with Finnair, British yeah. Airways and Iberia. Uh, and at the end, we have a profit pool of uh, revenues that uh, we share between the different airlines. So we have metal neutrality, the customer, they can fly in the airline that uh, they, they choose. Yeah. So at the end, uh, all the benefits uh, we share. But, but nevertheless, versus the other groups outside of your group, do you think you have... If they're not hedged, mm. are you making more money right now on the North Atlantic? I think in general, in, in the States, they don't hedge. In Europe, we hedge. So at the end, uh, we are balanced. Okay, okay. It balances itself out. Um, how is demand on, on that you're seeing at the moment? I'm hearing the banks aren't spending big at the moment. I'm hearing the big tech is not spending big. What's happening with demand? What's in particular is happening with business demand? So demand is very, very strong, uh, particularly leisure demand, uh, premium leisure traffic uh, is uh, amazing. Uh, the, the, the corporate traffic is the one that is lagging behind. We are still, for example, in levels uh, in BA in the second quarter of around 60% in volume, 70% in revenues of what we had in 2019. In the case of Iberia, it's, uh, it's better. Uh, it was uh, around 80% in volume, 90% in revenue. The main reason is uh, they operate in different markets, but also I think uh, in Spain, the people after COVID, they came back uh, to, to the office uh, before uh, that, uh, it, that what is happening in the uh, UK. You and I have just been on a panel uh, with Luis Rodriguez. He is, yeah. He's the guy that runs TAP. TAP there's going to be a cabinet minister meeting tomorrow that's going to determine kind of what happens next mm. in the privatization of the Portuguese flag carrier. Have you, have you had a little conversation with him? You've expressed interest in maybe bringing TAP into the IAG group. Do you think that's, why, why is that the right call? Why are you the right potential owner for TAP? Uh, first of all, we, we want to see uh, what are going to be the conditions of the privatization. Uh, but uh, we are a group that uh, was created in order to consolidate the sector. And we have uh, excellent brands, excellent airlines below us. So uh, TAP, uh, I think, uh, is an operation that could be interesting for us. And I think the model that we have is the right one for a company of, uh, of the size of uh, TAP. They can have the advantage to belong to a group like us, yeah. but uh, to have the freedom to preserve the brand, to preserve the, the, the customer, to be accountable of the P&L. So I think uh, what we have shown in the past is that all the airlines joining the group, they have developed much more than when yeah. they were alone. Um, do you think you can own Iberia, Europa, and TAP? 
Uh, yeah, yes, we are sure because uh, I think uh, Iberia and Europa, we are in the middle of the process with the competition yeah. authorities. Uh, this is an operation of consolidation in the hub of Madrid. But uh, TAP, when you look at the markets TAP is operating, mainly is uh, Brazil, that yeah. we don't have a, a lot of uh, presence there, and also the former colonies of Portugal. Uh, uh, so I think the networks are very complementary, and that's the reason we can operate, for example, with a dual hub uh, strategy in the same way we have uh, Dublin and London in the north. Can I just talk to you about what, what the future of this industry looks like? Is, it, is flying going to become too expensive because of the journey that aviation has to go on to get itself to carbon neutrality? We talk about SAF, sustainable aviation fuel. It is going to be, we t a jet fuel is expensive. Sustainable aviation fuel is going to be epically expensive. Do you think people are going to be able to afford to fly when we make this journey, when your aircraft are powered by sustainable aviation fuel? Is it going to be too expensive for all but the very elite? I think it's going to be more expensive. Uh, the question mark is if it's going to have an impact in the in the demand. Uh, we think that uh, we can decarbonize aviation, but maintaining uh, fares that can be affordable for the for the consumers. And we have a lot of people that they say we are ready to pay a little more in order to fly in a sustainable way. So I think that's the, the, the challenge, uh, but uh, we don't have any other alternative. We need to decarbonize aviation. The, the British government is already starting to back off mm. some of its sustainability targets. Do you think you could see aviation maybe being set looser targets? Do you see that coming? Do you think it's a mistake that the British government is backing off its targets? I think we need to maintain the ambition because otherwise uh, we are not going to uh, achieve the, the, the commitments of uh, to have net zero emissions by, by 2050. Uh, the main issue is that uh, we don't have staff enough to comply with the mandates that uh, they are putting in place. So. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if we put a mandate if you cannot buy SAF or ESAF. So what we need is production of SAF. It doesn't yep. make sense that uh, International Airlines Group, we are buying SAF from the US to put in our aircraft uh, yep. in Europe. It doesn't make sense and we need to fix that. Louis, always great to see you. Thank you very much, Steve, for stopping by to see us. Thank you very much. CEO of IAG. There you go, John. Flying's going to get more expensive. Guy Johnson, not the kind of news we want.